What's going on everybody? Sean Pierce Johnson here. It is the last day of Winter Nam 2018. I am standing here with Mr. Kevin Wilson of Wilson Effects. And uh, one of the coolest parts about coming to this booth has been they're doing something more different than anything that I've seen in the pedal world at the Nam show. They have not one, not two, not three, but 12, 12 wah pedals. You're crazy, man. Yeah, well, uh, calling it an addiction, I guess. I'll take that. I'll take that. So give everybody the basic rundown of what got you into the wah game and what we can expect from their, your 12 different flavors. You're like an ice cream shop, man. Yeah, so basically, uh, back 2005, 2006, I started building wah pedals point to point on perf board uh, for my own good. I wanted my own wah pedal. I wanted to start getting into it. and. Um, so basically I built one and I thought, you know what, I'm going to try to sell this on eBay and I sold one on eBay and then I sold another one and I, I thought, oh, I'm going to try to get a website and it just kind of evolved and, and I started to approach it from a, a studio musician's point of view to where um, if I'm in the studio and I'm laying down some tracks, I kind of like to have a Swiss Army knife. If I want to get this wah sound, that wah sound, I kind of want to have a bass circuit if I say, hey, I want a color sound like this is a tunable colorful clone based after the Macari wah. So, I thought if I want to have that sound, but hey, I might also like to have this sound or that sound. So I started thinking in terms of options to where I would want to be able to do this, this, and that, and still not have to bring a whole slew of wah pedals with me to the to the studio. So basically, each model is modeled off a different vintage wah, and it's not just a circuit. Uh, if I say it's modeled off a vintage wah pedal, I have bought that vintage wah pedal. I have tuned my pedal to that vintage wah pedal to get that sound in the stock setting. I'm guessing you spent a lot of money acquiring many a vintage wah pedal. I have a uh, not just wah pedal collection, but a pretty extensive vintage pedal collection. Yes, yes, yes indeed. I know somebody in my life that would get really mad if I had an extensive collection, and my collection's already pretty extensive. R&D. R&D, research and development. See, you have the excuse. <laughs> I'm just a demo guy. And they just come up, and they come in, and they come in, and they never leave. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I feel you. I have uh, whatever I buy anymore, I never sell. So I keep everything I buy because I like gear, man. What can I say? Look. Uh, look at all the pedals I have. I mean. <laughs> He's got quite a lot. We'll get you some sweeping shots in just a second. But back to these wah pedals. 12 flavors all based around you custom designed this inductor. Yes, uh, so basically I have an original Vox Clyde McCoy wah pedal at the house, so I yanked the uh, Halo inductor out of that, sent it out and said, hey, can you make me an inductor that is the specs of this inductor? And what they came up with is more of a trash can, film can style inductor, which I like because it's all enclosed. Uh, it's a little more rugged than the uh, halos with the exposed pieces and stuff. So yeah, this is my own custom-made inductor. Pretty sweet. And we're gonna we're gonna give everybody a little sound sample. But you get everything from like your Clyde McCoy to down to like the most esoteric kind of wah sound that you could possibly think of. And I have to ask, since you actually went to the trouble to find vintage examples of these wah pedals, what was the hardest one to track down? Uh Let's see, the Clyde McCoy actually I stumbled upon, so I couldn't say that was hard to track down. Um, the, the, I don't know as far as tracking down, but probably the most expensive uh, where I got into, like I had to buy three different versions was maybe the old WH-10s. Them, uh, them got a little, pr at the time when I bought them, there was no reissue when I, when I cloned that. I was like the first person to successfully clone it. And uh, so I ended up buying three of them, and I believe they were about like uh, $500 a pop or something like that. But my old Clyde McCoy, I got a really good deal on it from a guy that was going out of business. I think I got, I got, a, I probably shouldn't say it out loud, but I only paid $675 for it. <laughs> well, I have no reference for the vintage wall market, so I'm just going to let what he said speak for itself but I think it's time that we hear everything uh, so here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna plug into all of them I'll give you guys some quick shaft work uh, and some other stuff going on and I'll put up on the screen exactly what we're listening to so let's go check that out right now <laughs> Wow, 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 wow,
of the Wilson Waz. And these are ready, are these ready to go? People can order them and buy them and whatnot from you? Yes, they're available through the website. Actually, uh, today's the last day of the NAMM sale. Um, but uh, you can pick them up at dealers. You can pick them up directly on a website. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me at wilsoneffects at wilsoneffects.com. All right, there you go, guys. That's it from Wilson Effects for NAMM 2018. And if you want to see more, click that floating subscribe bubble somewhere on this screen. And until next time, I wish you guys all great tone and happy stomping. Cheers, my friends. <laughs> <laughs>